Mr. Frank? Kralla. Mr. Kralla. Me. My good friends. Oh, it is so good to see you home. We had heard nothing. I'm alone. You must come home with us. And rest now. You must stay with us. No, me. I can't stay in Amsterdam. Mr. Frank, this is your home. Amsterdam is your home. It has too many memories for me. Everywhere there's something, me. Everywhere. I mean, even seeing you and Mr. Kralla. Forgive me, I shouldn't talk to you like this after all that you did. Well, you would do it again. Everything's gone. The book. They took everything, except some papers. We saved your letters and papers. Please burn them. Burn everything. Hold on. If I got back here, I'd find that book. Anna's diary? Is where she left it.
9th of July, 1942. 1942 is a possibility. Only three years ago. Dear diary, since you and I are going to be great friends, I will start by telling you all about myself. My name is Anna Frank. I am 13 years old. I was born in Germany, but since my family is Jewish, we emigrated to Holland when Hitler came to power. Things went well for us until the war came and the German occupation. Then things got very bad for the Jews. You could not do this and you could not do that. We had to wear yellow stars. I had to turn in my bike. I couldn't go to a Dutch school anymore. I couldn't go to the movies or ride in an automobile or even on a streetcar and a million other things. But somehow we children still managed to have fun. This morning, Father woke me at five o'clock and told me to hurry and get dressed. We were going into hiding. I was to put on as many clothes as I could it would look too suspicious if we walked along carrying suitcases. We were going to disappear, vanish into thin air. I'm living a great adventure. Three other people were coming in with us. Father knew them, but we had never met them. Something's happened. They have three miles to walk. Mother. They've been arrested, I know. Will you stop that? Mother, father. We're here. You see? <laughs> Uh, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Mr. Frank. Peter. There were too many of the green police on the streets. We had to take the long way around. Did you introduce yourself? My daughter, Anna. Hello. My wife, Edith, Margot, Mr. Hello. and Mrs. Van Dan. And oh, this is our uh, son, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, please let us take off some of these clothes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Carl. Mr. Frank, ah, you're all here. That is good. We had hoped to have everything in order. Oh, please, Mr. Carl, I don't even think of it. After all, we'll have plenty of leisure to arrange everything ourselves. I brought some sandwiches for your lunch. Thank you, me. The candles are here, and your stores of dried beans and potatoes. I'll get your ration books this afternoon. Ration books? Yes, Mr. Carl. If they see our names on ration books, but didn't know we're here. Don't worry. It won't be your names that'll be on. Anna, no. You must never touch a curtain. Never. No one must ever touch a curtain day or night. If someone on the streets should look up or someone in those houses over there should see, we would be lost. And please remember, it's not only our lives that are at stake, but also Meep's and Mr. Kralis. You have but 13 minutes to get settled. Thank you. Meep or I will be up each day to bring you food and news. Come, Meep, we must go. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Mr. Kralis. Bye. How can we thank you? I never thought I'd live to see the day when a man like Mr. Frank would have to go into hiding. When you think of it. Thank you, Mr. Crowler. Bye, me. Three more. Excuse me, Mr. Frank. Uh, what did he mean, just 13 minutes? Before the workmen come. Now, while the men are in the building below, we must have complete quiet. Every sound can be heard down there, not only in the offices, but in the workrooms, too. The men come at about 8.30, they leave at about 5.30, so to be perfectly safe from 8 in the morning until 6 in the evening, we must move about up here only when it is absolutely necessary, and then in stocking feet. We must not speak above a whisper. We must not run any water. We cannot use the sink or even, forgive me, the WC. The pipes go down through the workrooms. 
no trash must ever be... No trash must ever be thrown out, which might reveal that someone is living up here, not even a potato peeling. You must burn everything in the stove at night. This is the way that we must live until it is over, if we are to survive. Until it is over. <laughs> After six o'clock, we can move about, we can talk and laugh, have our supper, read, play games, just as we would at home. And now I think it would be wise if we all went to our rooms and was settled before eight o'clock. Mrs. Van Dyne, you and your husband will be upstairs. I regret that there's no place up there for Peter, but he'll be here near us. And where am I? You and Margaret will be in there, Annalie. Excuse me, Mr. Franco. Yes? Where do you and Mrs. Frank sleep? This room is also our bed. Oh, no, no, no. You, you take the right. upstairs. It's we'll sleep your down place. here. Please, I've thought this out for weeks. It's the best arrangement. The only arrangement. Uh, Edith, mm -hmm. you must have some rest, dear. You didn't close your eyes last night. Now, please, go go in the girls' room with Mum. Hmm? How about Annie? I feel fine. I'm going to help Father. This way, Mrs. Van Excuse me. Up here. What a nice cat. Where do you go to school? Jewish secondary. That's where Margaret and I go. Yeah, I know. I've never seen you around. I used to see you, sometimes. You did? But why didn't you ever come over? Oh, I don't know. I'm sort of a lone wolf. Can't be a lone wolf here. our friends will say we don't show up today. I had a date with Sana. You know Sana to freeze? No. Sana's my best friend. She's thin like me. They always yell at us, Anna and Sana, the skinny bananas. You took off your star. That's right. You can't do that in the restroom if you go out without your star. Going out. Uh, help me. I'm helping. Uh, what are you going to do with it? Burn it. It's funny. I don't think I could burn mine. I don't know why. You couldn't. Something that they make you worse, they can kick you around. I know. But after all, it is the star of David, isn't it? I'm on it. It's almost eight. Don't you want to come and sit with us, Peter? It's going to be a long day. No, thanks. This is fine. You won't forget to take off your shoes, will you? Peter? It's nice to have you with us. Yes, Mr. Frank. See you later. Did you know 
He went to the same school. Mr. Crawler and his secretary are down there below us in the office. Our protectors, we call them. I asked Father what would happen to them if anyone found out they were hiding us. Father said they would suffer the same fate that we would. We are over an old spice factory. You can smell the spices all through the building. read A Tale of Two Cities through in that first day. It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. It is a far, far better rest that I go to than I have ever known. The end. It was the saddest book I ever read.
is us, Meep and Crowler. Good evening, Mr. Crowler. Good evening, Meep. Good evening, Good evening. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, Mr. Frog. Yes. Yes, Mr. Box, you asked for her. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Well, my dear friends, you are all so quiet up here. I thought you'd go out for a walk. Oh, can you imagine me? I didn't talk. I hardly moved for one whole day. Yeah, yeah. I wish they could hear that at school. Pushy! 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 Peter! Pushy! 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 You don't have to whisper, Bella. Oh, there you are. It's such a nice cat. There's a box there. Will you open it, please? You know how I'm going to think of it here as a boarding house. It's a very peculiar boarding house. Father, my film stars. I was wondering where they were. And Queen Wilhelmina, how wonderful. There's something more. Go on, look further. Now? Doesn't matter. I don't ever want you to go beyond that door. Never? Never. I'm sorry, Anna. It isn't safe. I see. It'll be hard, I know that. But always remember this, Anna. There are no walls, there are no locks, no bolts that anyone can put on your mind. As a matter of fact, just between us, Anna, being here has certain advantages for you. Now, for instance, you remember that battle you had with your mother the other day on the subject of overshoes? You said you'd rather die than wear overshoes, remember? <laughs> but what happened? In the end, you had to wear them. Well, now you see, for as long as we are here, you won't have to wear overshoes. Isn't that good? And the piano? You won't have to practice on the piano. I tell you, this is going to be a fine life for you. <laughs> for someone like me to keep a diary. Not only because I have never done so before, but because it seems to me that neither I, nor for that matter anyone else, will be interested in the unbosomings of a 13-year-old schoolgirl. Still, what does that matter? I want to write, but more than that, I want to bring out all kinds of things that lie buried deep in my heart. First of all, I expect I should be describing what it's like to go into hiding. But I don't really know yet myself. I only know it's funny never to be able to go outdoors. Never to breathe fresh air. Never to run and shout and jump. Wednesday, the 23rd of September, 1942. The news of the war is good. Stalingrad is still holding out. The Russian offensive continues in the Moscow area. It's 
safe now. The last workman has left. We. Oui. Oh, I'm first for the thirteenth. Six o'clock, Margot. School is over. In my shoes. Have you seen my shoes? What shoes? You're gonna be sorry. I am. I need to. Wait till I get you. I'm waiting. Play like that with faith that's not dignified. Who wants to be dignified? I don't want to be dignified. You complain that I don't treat you like a grown-up, but when I do, you resent it. I want some fun. I don't know what's the matter with that boy. Give him a little time. He isn't used to girls. Time? is in two months' time. I could cry. I wonder where maybe she's usually so proud. Margot, Margot, come dance with me, please. Got more work to do, Anna. You know, we're going to forget how to dance. When we get out, we won't remember a thing. Uh, Where would he be with this cat? He hasn't finished his lessons, has he? Pater! Pater! What is it? Your mother says to come out. I'm giving Mushi his dinner. I'm feeding my cat. You know what your father says about you wasting all your time with that cat? For her, I haven't even looked at him since lunch. All right, all right. I'm only telling you. I'll feed him. And you stay out of here. And I mean out. Is that any way for you to talk to your little girlfriend? Mother, I asked you, would you please not say that? Look, he's blushing. <laughs> he's blushing. Please, I'm not, but leave me alone, will you? What did I say? You act like it's something to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be ashamed of to have a little girlfriend. That's crazy. She's only 13. So what? And you're 16. It's just perfect. Your father is 10 years older than I am. Mr. Frank, I warn you, this war lasts much longer. You and me, we're going to be related. Mazel tov. I haven't seen my cat since lunch. I'm giving Mushi his dinner. My little Mushi. I couldn't live without my precious Mushi. You wonderful cat, you. All right, Miss Quack Quack. What's that? Miss Quack Quack. You! I heard all about you. How you talk so much in class, I call you Miss Quack Quack. You're the most intolerable, insufferable boy I ever met. Quack, quack, quack. Quack! Oh, um, my dear, you're oh. hot. You're warm. Are you feeling all right? Mother, please. You don't have a fever, do you? No. You know we can't call a doctor here, ever. There's only one thing to do. Watch carefully. Prevent an illness before it comes. Let me see your tongue. Mother, this is perfectly absurd. Annie, dear, don't be such a baby. Let me see your tongue. Otto. Anna, you hear your mother, don't you? Come on, open up. Quack! Annie? Otto? Anna? You're all right. Uh, 
I think there's nothing the matter with our honor than a ride on her bike or a visit with our friend, son of the Vries wouldn't cure. Isn't that so, Anna? I keep wishing that Pater was a girl instead of a boy. Then I'd have someone to talk to. With all the boys in the world, why did I have to get locked up with him? Strange we don't hear. Maybe she got hurt the flack. Here you go. I wish she'd get here. I'm going crazy without cigarettes. Anna, we've got an excellent in your history paper today and a very good in Latin. Yes, but how about algebra? Well, I have a confession to make. Up until now, I managed to stay ahead of you in algebra. Today, you caught up with me. <laughs> we leave it to Margot to correct. It's an algebra file, Father. File. How did I do? Excellent, of course. Oh, honey, honey, please. Your French composition today, Margaret, was wonderful. Just wonderful. This is found on. May I try it on? No, honey. It's all right, really. But please, be careful with it. My father gave me this coat the year before he died. He always bought me the best money could buy. Did you have a lot of boyfriends before you were married? I mean, that's a personal question. It's not courteous to ask personal questions. I don't mind. Annika, our house was always swarming with boys. When I was a young girl... Oh, no, not again. Shut up! One, One summer, summer, we had, we a, had big a big house, house in the hill. Hilverson. The boys. The boys would come buzzing around like bees around a jam pot. When I was 17, well, we were wearing our skirts very short in those days, and I had such good-looking legs. I still have. I may not be as pretty as I used to be, but I still have my legs. How about it, Mr. Frank? All right, all right. We see them. I'm not asking you. I'm asking Mr. Frank. Mother, for heaven's sakes. Oh, I embarrass you too, do I? Well, let me tell you something. I only hope the girl you marry has is good. Annika, my father used to worry about me with all the boys hanging around. And he used to say to me, if any of those boys get fresh, you just say to him, remember, Mr. So-and-so, remember, I am a lady. Look at you talking that way in front of her. Don't you know she puts it all down in that damn diary? So what if she does? I'm only telling the truth. Haven't you finished yet? No. Oh, I'm thinking. Leave him alone. All right. All right. I'm a dunce. A hopeless case. You're not hopeless. Now, don't talk like Just that. that you haven't got anyone to help you. Like, like Father helps Anna and me. Well, if I... Well, if we could help. What about it, Peter? Would you like to study with us? Shall we make our school co-educational? Thanks, yes. Mr. Frank, yes? you are an angel, an absolute angel. Why didn't I meet you before I met that one there? I think it might be better if you went into your room, Peter, to work. Excuse me. Peter, you listen to Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank is a highly educated man. It's after 8 o'clock. Where are they? 
At least one of them should have come. They'll come. They'll come. Don't worry. Don't tell me. I know something's wrong. Isn't it bad enough around here without you sprawling all over the place? If you didn't smoke all the time, you wouldn't be so bad-tempered. Am bad I smoking? Do you see me smoking? Oh, you already smoked up all the cigarettes. One package. Me, Boney brought me one it's package. It's a filthy habit, and this is a good time for you to break oh, yourself up. stop up. it. Please. You're smoking up all our money. You know that, don't you? Will you shut up? And what are you staring at? I never heard grown-ups quarrel like that before. I thought only children quarreled. This isn't a quarrel. It's a discussion. And I never heard children so rude before. I rude. Yes. Me. Drink your milk. The trouble with you is you've been spoiled. What you need is a good old-fashioned spanking. Remember, Mr. So-and-so, that I am a lady. Mm, you are the most sacred lady. Why aren't you nice and quiet like your sister, Margaret? Why do you have to show off all the time? Let me give you a little advice, young lady. Men don't like that kind of a thing in a girl. Do you know that? A man likes a girl to listen to him once in a while. A domestic girl who loves to cook and sew and clean. Let's vote first. I'd open my veins. I'm going to be remarkable. I'm going to Paris. Paris. Study music and art. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be an actress or a writer or a dancer. Oh, look at you do. I'm so sorry. You clumsy little fool. Because you caught my father gave me. Oh, Rhoda, what do you care, Rhoda? I could kill you. I could just kill you. Catherine, I could kill you. Leave you. Leave you. Catherine, no. Tell me you're not. Honey, you, you must not behave in that way. It was an accident. Anyone can have an accident. I don't mean that. I mean the answering back. You must not answer back. They're our guests. You don't hear Margot getting into any arguments with them, do you? Try to be like Margot. And have them walk all over me the way they do her? No thanks. I don't know what happens to you, Annie. If I had ever talked to my mother as you talked to me... Things have changed, Mother. People aren't like that anymore. Yes, Mother. No, Mother. Anything you say, Mother. I've got to fight things out for myself. But make something of myself. It isn't necessary to fight to do it. Margaret doesn't... Margaret! That's all I hear. Why aren't you Come like on. Margaret? Don't... Everything she does is right, and everything I do is wrong. You're all against me, and you worst of all. I don't know how we can go on living this way. I can't say a word to Annie. She flies at me. You know, Anna, in a half an hour, she'll be out here laughing and joking. And, uh, I told your father it wouldn't work, two families. But no, no, he had to ask them. sound my heart stops. It's me. Father. Yes. It's me. Here's your list. Yeah. Is it me? Yes. At last I'll have some cigarettes. Meep's here. I can't tell you how sorry I am about the coat. Don't worry. Hello, hello. <laughs> Mr. Crowler, when Mr. Crowler comes, the sun begins to shine. Dirk has had to leave. Dirk's meeting fiance. He had to Dirk. go into hiding Dirk. in the country to escape the labor call. Oh, he has let me have the radio, radio for you. When we come, we have tried to break something. Good news for something, but look at it that way.
Rapid Radio. It gives us our eyes and ears out into the world. We listen to the German station only for good music. The Axis forces in the Western Desert. And we listen to the BBC to for hope. The nights of ceaseless attacks by our land and air forces are now in full retreat. The Eighth Army continues to advance. It's good. All right, Peter. Now let's see what they have to say about it, the Nazis, huh? Berlin. Must we listen? All right, Peter. That's enough.
Last night. We had a visitor last night. Yes, yes. A thief. It was a thief? Did you hear him? Yes, we heard him. He was right under you. In the office, right under here. We did not know. We thought it was the green police. Are you sure, me? You were, of course, quiet. We didn't move. We hardly breathed all that. That is good. It was close. Too close. He went through everything. The desk and the files. The desk and the files. And he found a safe, but he could not get it open. He's looking for our ration card supply from the underground. Somebody knows. They're in that safe. Don't come back. You should get rid of that safe. Get it out of here. Yes. Put a sign on the door. Burglars do not come back. The safe is gone. Good jokes, <laughs> yes. Mr. Frank, yes. I must talk to you. Yes, of course. Maybe it's the radio. We should get rid of the radio. Put in the stove, burn it. If the green Don't police found that radio... And they'd find her diary. We'll burn that, too. Not my diary. My diary goes, I go with it. Where is it, Mr. Van Dyke? If they find us, they might just as well find the diary, the radio. What'll be the difference? Usually, when I come up here, I try to bring good news. Yes, I know. Something has happened. A man came to me. He told me that he has a Jewish friend, a dentist. He begged me, could I find him a hiding place? So I, I have come to you. I, I know it is a terrible thing to ask of you, living the way you are, but... Could you take him in? Well, of course we would. His name is Jan Dussel. Dussel, Dussel, wait a minute. But I think I know him. I think it's fine to Don't have you? him. But Otto, where are we going to put him? Where? We sold little food as it is, and to take in another person. We can stretch the food a little, Mr. Van Damme. You can have my bed. No, thank you, Peter. Margot will move in here with us, and he can have her bed. Hmm? I'll get my things out. Otto Frank? Yes. Let me have your things, please. Thank you, Mr. Frank. I leave you in good hands. Mr. Dussel, I must return your coat. What can I say to thank you? Mr. Crawler and me, they're our lifeline. Without them, we couldn't live. Please, you make us seem very heroic. It isn't that at all. We simply don't like the Nazis. We don't like their message. I we know, don't. I know. No one is going to tell us Dutchmen what to do with our damn Jews. <laughs> we will be up tomorrow to see that they are treating you right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Clara. Bye, Mr. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Mr. Welcome, Mr. Dussel. This is my wife, Edith. Mr. and Mrs. Van Damme, their son, Peter. My daughters, Margot and Anna. Please, Mr. 
Trīs mēs tad tev slūt. Sēt tā. I'm dreaming, I know it. Mr. Otto Frank here. You're not in Switzerland then. Someone said that you had escaped to Switzerland. And you've been here all this time? Ever since July. Did Mr. Carlo warn you you won't get much to eat here? You can imagine. Three ration cards among the seven of us. Now you make eight. Mr. Van Dunn, you don't realize what's happening outside that you should warn me of a thing like that. You don't realize what's going on. Right here in Amsterdam, every day, hundreds of Jews disappear. They surround a block. They search house by house. Every day, children come home from school to find their parents gone. Hundreds are being deported. People that, that you and I know, the, the Hollensteins, the Wessels. Oh, no. You get your call-up notice, come to the station on such and such a day and hour. Bring only what you can carry. If you don't go, they come and drag you from your home and ship you off to Mauthausen, the death camp. We didn't know that things had got so much worse. Forgive me for speaking so. Do you know the DeVries? They're gone. Son and I are in the same class. Son is my best, my best friend. She returned home from school to find her parents gone. She was alone for two days. And then they came and took her away. Gone? It's with all the others. Some people named Meyerberg. They live near us. I you think know we should I... put this off until later, Mrs. Van Dan. I'm sure Mr. Dussel would like to get settled now. Annale, would you like to take Mr. Dussel to his room now? If you come with me, Mr. Dussel. Uh, forgive me if, if I haven't expressed my gratitude. This has been such a shock to me. I always thought of myself as Dutch. I was born in Holland. My father was born in Holland and my grandfather. And, and now, after all these years, you know, if you will excuse me. from what Mr. Crawler tells us. Mr. Crawler says that things are improving. I like it better the way Crawler tells us.
Good night, both of you. Say good night. Good night, mother. Good night, Mr. Fong. Good night. Good night, both of you. Do you have any children, Mr. Dussel? No, I, I never married. Have you no family at all? No one. How dreadful. You must be terribly lonely. Mm, I'm used to it. I don't think I could ever get used to it. <clears throat> Didn't you even have a pet, a cat or a oh. dog? No, no, I, I have an allergy to fur-bearing animals. It gives me asthma. Oh, dear. Huh? Peter has a cat. He has? He has it here? Yes. Hmm. <coughs> 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 room all the time. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be all right. Well, I, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I'm not going to be too much of a bother to you, Mr. Dussel. Mm -hmm. I seem to be able to get everyone's back up. Oh, I, I always get along very well with young people. My patients all bring their children to me because they know I get along well with them. So don't you worry about that. Thank you, Mr. Dussel. Good night. I'll be back. Good night, Mr. Dussel.
save me. Hush, darling. Hush, it's all right. It's all right. Please, Mr. Dussel, turn on the light. It was just a dream. You're here, safe. You see? Something must be done with that child Shh. yelling like that. Who knows who might be in the street? She's endangering all our lives. Mr. Dussel, after all, Anna is not exactly a trained frontline soldier. Please, Mr. Dussel, go back to bed. She'll be herself in a minute or two, won't you, Annie? Go back to bed. Excuse me. I'm going to the WC, the one room where there's peace. Go back to bed now. Would you like some water? Was it a very bad dream? Perhaps if you told me. I'd rather not talk about it. Try to sleep, then. I'll sit right here beside you. You don't have to. But I'd like to stay with you very much, really. I'd rather you didn't. Good night, the You'll be all right. There's nothing that you want. Do you please ask Bob to come? Yes, of course, honey dear. She asks for you. Edith. Go to her, Otto. She's them trembling with fear. <laughs> she wants nothing of me. She pulled away when I leaned down to kiss her. The green police, they broke down the door and grabbed me and tried to drag me out the way they did some. Anna. Oh, it's just a phase. All girls turn to their fathers at this age. They give all their love to their fathers. Feeling? You weren't like this. You didn't shut me out. So? Now, do you want me to read to you for a while? No, just sit with me for a minute. Was I awful? Do you think anyone outside could have heard no. me? No. Now lie down quietly, so. Like this. Now try to sleep. I'm a terrible coward. I'm so disappointed in myself. I think I'm really grown up. And then something happens and I run to you like a baby. I love you, Father. Anyone but you. Annale, Annale. It's true. You're the only one I love. I've been thinking about it for a long time. It's fine. It's fine to have you. Tell me that you love me, honey, but I'd be much happier if you said that you loved your mother as well. She needs your help so much. Your love. We have nothing in common. She doesn't understand me. Whenever I try to explain my views on life, she asks me if I'm constipated. You hurt her very much just now. She's crying. She's in there crying. Oh, Father, I was horrible, wasn't I? What's the matter with me? Tell me. Don't say it's just a phase. Help me. There's so little that we parents can do to help our children, honey. We can only try to set a good example. Point the way. The rest you must do yourself. I'm trying. Really, I am. Every night I think back over all the things I did that day that were wrong. Like putting the wet bath in Mrs. Farnan's bed. <laughs> and now this with mother. I 
say to myself, that was wrong. And I make up my mind, I'm never going to do that again. Never. I may do something worse, but I'll never do that again. I have a nicer side, Father. But I'm scared to show it. I'm afraid people will laugh at me. So if you lean on, it comes to the outside. And the good honor stays in the inside. And I keep on trying to switch them around. I have the good honor outside. And the bad honor inside. And be what I'd like to be. Might be if only. The 29th of October, 1942. Mr. Dussel and I had a great battle yesterday. Yes, Mr. Dussel. According to him, nothing, I repeat, nothing is right about me. While he was going on at me, I thought, someday I'm going to give you such a smack that you'll fly right up to the ceiling. Why is it that every grown-up thinks he knows the way to bring up children? Particularly the grown-ups that haven't any. Monday, the 9th of November, 1942. Wonderful news. The Allies have landed in Africa. Churchill spoke on the BBC from London. Which they have so often meted out to others. Ah, this is not the end. Uh, it is not even the beginning of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. The air raids are getting worse. The British planes come over day and night on their way to Germany. much. Suppose they hit this house. What will we do? We can't go out in the street. What will we do? If they hit this house, your worries will be over. That noise, that big explosion, they hit one of the English planes and fell right in this block. Peter! It's 
Far away from here. Shh, Carol, please don't. Look, just look at them. Why, Mrs. Fernandez, this would be music for your ears. Music? Well, of course, the more planes the British send over, the sooner the war will be over. The sooner we'll be out of here, the sooner we'll be home again. I don't believe it'll ever be over. Do you know what I'd like right now? A cup of tea. Oh, yes, please. You can't have tea then for breakfast. If you have tea now, you won't have any tomorrow. I don't care. Neither do I, no. Me too, please. How about you, Mr. Bissell? Would you like your tea now or tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning. Sure? Sure. I'll take mine now. The skylight! Praise be thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and bidden us kindle the Hanukkah lights. Praise be thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who has wrought wondrous deliverances for our fathers in days of old. Praise be thou, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, that thou hast given us life and sustenance and brought us to this happy season. Amen. 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 Monday, the 7th of December, 1942. The Hanukkah holiday came early this year. We kindled this Hanukkah light to celebrate the great and wonderful deeds wrought through the zeal with which God filled the hearts of the heroic Maccabees 2,000 years ago. They fought against indifference, against tyranny and oppression, and they restored our temple to us. May these lights remind us that we should ever look to God, whence cometh our help. Amen. 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 I lift up mine eyes unto the mountains from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel does neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall keep thee from all evil. He shall keep thy soul. The Lord shall guard thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth and forevermore. Amen. 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 May I have a hand? Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very moving. No, no, no. Sit down. Sit down. Where are you going? There's lots more songs and presents. Ah. Presents? Not this, this year, party. unfortunately. But always on Hanukkah, everyone gives presents, everyone. That's right. Like our St. Nicholas Day. Uh, St. No. Nicholas Day. No, not like St. Nicholas Day. What kind of a Jew are you that you don't know Hanukkah? <laughs> I remember particularly the candles. First one, as we have tonight, and the second night you light two candles, the next night three, and so on, until there are eight candles burning. When there are eight candles, it's truly beautiful. What I remember best are the presents we used to get. Eight days of presents, and well, each day they got better and better. We are all here, alive. That's present enough. No, it isn't. I've got something. What is it? Present. Presents. Real mm. presents. She made it herself. Look at that. Isn't it festive? <laughs> isn't it gay? Beautiful. Yeah. Margaret. Ah. <laughs> Read it out loud. 
You have never lost your temper. <laughs> <laughs> you never will, I fear. You are so good. But if you should, put all your crosswords here. Oh. <laughs> It's a new crossword puzzle book. <laughs> it's one you've done. And I rubbed it all out. And if you wait a little and forget, you can do it all over again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for Mrs. Fonda. Uh huh. Oh, I feel terrible. I don't have a thing for anybody. <laughs> it's hair shampoo. I took all oh, the yeah. odds and ends of soap and mixed them with the last of my toilet water. Oh, thank you, Annika. <laughs> I wanted to write a poem for all of them, but I didn't have time. All right, all right, all right. Yours, Mr. Fondam, is really huh? something. Something you want more than anything. Mm. Cigarettes. Cigarettes. Two of them. Father found some old pipe tobacco in the pocket lining of his coat, and we made them. Rather, Father did. <laughs> Look at that. Put it, light it. Go on, light it. It's tobacco. Really, it is. There's a little fluff in it, but not much. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, honey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fondant. <laughs> Mother, come for greeting. Here's an I.O.U. that I promised to pay. Ten hours of doing whatever you say. Signed, Anna Frank. Ten hours of doing what you're told? Anything you're told? That's right. You wouldn't want to sell that, Mrs. Frank, uh, would you? Never. This is the most precious gift I've ever had. Father. Anna, I wasn't supposed to have a present. Look at that. It's a muffler. Not to wear around your neck like an ascot, you know. I knitted it in the dark each night. I'm afraid it looks better in the dark. It's fine. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Isn't it? Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Anna. For Lucia. Oh. <laughs> and this is for you. Yourself. From Miss Quack Quack. Go on. Open it. Aren't you going to open it? Come on, show us what it is. It's a safety razor. Huh? It's not new. You've got it for me secondhand, but you really do need a razor now. What for? Look at his upper lip. See? He wants to get rid of that? Put some milk on it and let the cat lick it off. <laughs> You think you're funny, don't you? Look, he can't wait. He's going in to try it now. <laughs> I'm going to give Mushi his present. Mushi, a Mushi, a Mushi. Enough. And last but never least, my roommate, Mr. Russell. Something for me? Capsules. They're earplugs. Put in your ear so you won't hear me when I crash around at night. <laughs> I made them myself. Try them. See if you can hear me. Wait, I'll put like that? Is that what you mean? Are you ready? What? Are you ready? They were. <laughs> 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 They went in. They went in. Thank you. 
And now let's sing the song, Father. Well. Wait, you have a Hanukkah song, Mr. Dussel. Oh, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, the sweet I'm celebration. I'm, I'm afraid we shouldn't sing the song tonight. You see, Mr. Dussel, it's a song of jubilation and of rejoicing. One is apt to become just a little too enthusiastic about it. Please, let's sing the song, Father. I promise not to shout. Very well, but quietly, honey. I'll keep my eye on you. If you oh! Oh! I told you not to come in here with that cat. Get out of here! <laughs> What's the matter with you? Haven't you any sense? Get that cat out of here. Cat. You heard me. Get it out of here. I have no cat. Mr. <laughs> Dussel! <laughs> it doesn't have to be the cat. Just a hair's. On his clothing from the cat is enough when he comes in the room. Don't worry, you won't be bothered anymore. We're getting rid of it. No, at last you listen to me. And I'm not doing it for you. That's all in your mind, all of it. I'm doing it because I'm sick of seeing that cat eat all our food. It's not true. I only give him scraps. Don't tell me. He gets fatter every day. Damn cat looks better than any of us. How he goes tonight? No. Mr. Fondon, you can't do that. That's Peter's cat. Peter loves that cat. Honey. If he goes, I go. Go, go. He's not going and the cat's not going. What's the matter with you? It's Hanukkah, it's Hanukkah. Please, Annie, sing. Oh, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, the sweet celebration Hanukkah. around the feast we gather. I, I think we should first blow out the candles. Then we'll have something for tomorrow night. Father. You're supposed to let it burn itself out. I'm sure that God understands shortages. <laughs> Praise be thou, Lord, our God, who has sustained us and permitted us to celebrate this joyous festival. Amen. 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 Amen.
Hello. the green police they've gone to get help maybe they can stop looking for papers or another thief looking for money i'm going down maybe he'll still be there Anna, this is saturday we have no way of knowing what has happened down there until me comes the car come here on monday morning <laughs> we cannot live with this uncertainty can we Get our money. They say you can buy them off so much ahead. Quick, go upstairs and get the money. Keep still. You want to be dragged off to a concentration camp? You're going to stand there till they come up here and get you? Will you keep still? I lift up mine eyes unto the mountains from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. They will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel does neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. I better go and look and make sure. Lord shall keep you from all evil. He shall keep thy soul. Lord shall God take away now. Let that come in. 
typewriter. I ran away in such a hurry. He didn't even stop to shut the street door. It was swinging wide open. Watchman was passing. Nick. Es ist eine Katze. Ja. Mit, mit, mit. Mit, mit, mit. Miau, miau. Ja, der Burglar. Er got out as he heard me coming. Was 
Werde ich schon fort wie Ich Take us and to continue with this terrible agony. I can't stand it. It's all right, Anna. The danger has passed. Who says the danger has passed? Don't you realize that there were in greater danger than ever? Please, Mr. Dussel, will you keep still? Thanks to this clumsy fool, someone now knows we're up here. Someone now knows that we're up here hiding. It's a thief. You think the thief is going to go to the green police and say I was robbing a place the other night and I heard a noise above my head. You think a thief is going to do that? Yes, I think he will. You're crazy. I think that someday the, the thief will be caught and he'll make a bargain with the Gestapo. He'll say to the Gestapo, if you let me off, I'll show you where some Jews are hiding. That's what I think. I... He's right. Oh, Mother, let's get out of here. We can't stay here now. Please, let's go. Go? Where? Yes, where? Have you lost all faith? All courage? A few moments ago, we thought they had come for us, didn't we? We thought it was the end. Well, it was not the end. You're alive. You see? We thank thee, O Lord our God, that in thy infinite mercy thou hast again seen fit to spare us. Amen. Amen. Anale. The song, hmm? How about the song? Oh, Hanukkah. Oh, Hanukkah. The sweet celebration. Around the feast we gather in complete jubilation. Happiest of seasons now is here. Many other reasons for good cheer. Together, together, whatever tomorrow may bring. So hear us rejoicing and merrily voicing the Hanukkah song that we sing. Oh, hear us rejoicing and merrily voicing the Hanukkah song that we sing. <laughs> Saturday, the 1st of January, 1944. Another new year has begun, and we find ourselves still in our hiding place. We have been here now for one year, five months, and 25 days. One of our family has left us. Mushi ran away. <coughs> We're all a little thinner. The Fondon's discussions are as violent as ever. Mother still doesn't understand me. But then, I don't understand her either. There is one great change, however. A change in myself. I read somewhere that girls of my age don't feel quite certain of themselves but they become quiet within and begin to think of the miracle that is taking place in their bodies. I think
think that what is happening to me is so wonderful. Not only what can be seen, but what is taking place inside. Each time it has happened, I feel I have a sweet secret, and I long for the time when I shall feel that secret within me again. Surprise, Mr. Carla and Eva here. Oh, thank you. But you shouldn't have come. You should have at least one day to yourselves. Don't say that. It's a wonderful to see them. What is it? What is it? Mr. Carla. Happy New Year, Mr. Dussel. Happy New Year. How are you, Margaret? Feeling any better? I'm all right. We filled her full of every kind of pill. So she won't cough and make a noise. Look what Mip has brought us. Cake. Mm. Cake. Well, I'll get some plates. Thank you, Mephia. Thank you. You must have used all of your sugar rations for weeks. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's ages since I've even seen a cake. <laughs> Not since you brought the one last year. Remember, it had a piece of 1943 written on it. Peace in 1944. Peace has to come sometime, you know. Here you are, Alicia. Now, how many of us are there? None for me, thank you. Oh, you must. Please, me. Good. That leaves one, two, three, seven of us. Eight. The same as it always is. I left Margaret out. I take it for granted Margaret won't eat any. Why wouldn't she? I think it won't harm her. All right, all right. I just didn't want her to start coughing again, that's all. Yeah. And please, uh, Mrs. Frank should cut the cake. What do you mean? Well, Mrs. Frank devised things better. Just what are you trying to say? Forget it, Carrie. We're no. wasting time. No. Don't I always give everybody exactly the same? Don't I? Forget it, Carrie. No, I want an answer. Don't I? Yes, yes, yes. Everybody gets exactly the same. Except Mr. Van Dyne gets a little bit more. That's a lie. She always cuts the same. Van Dyne, please. <laughs> you see me for the little sugar cake does to us? It goes right to our heads. <laughs> Here you are, Mrs. Frank. Thank you. You're sure you won't have any? Very sure. Meep. No, thank you, really. Cut the cake.
Inspector. Maybe Moosey went back to our house. If you ever get over there, would well, you think that you could? I'm afraid with him gone a week, Peter. Make up your mind. Already someone has had a big, nice meal from that cat. <laughs> Delicious, Nate. Delicious. Well, I must run. There's a party tonight. Oh, heavenly. Remember now what everyone's wearing and what you have to eat and everything so you can tell us tomorrow. I'll give you a full report. Goodbye, everyone. <clears throat> Goodbye. Goodbye, me. Hey, just a minute. There's something I'd like you to do for me. Where are you going? Yeah, what are you going to do? What is wrong? Father says he's going to sell her for a coat. She's crazy about that old fur coat. Can you hear me? My father gave me that oh, coat. No, you have no right. Is it possible that anyone can be silly enough to worry about a fur coat at a time like this. It's none of your darn business. And if you say one more thing... Uh... Just a uh, little discussion on the advisability of selling this coat. As I've often reminded Mrs. Van Damme, it's very selfish of her to keep it when people outside are in such desperate need of clothing. So if you're pleased to sell it for us, it should fetch a good price. And by the way, would you get me cigarettes? I don't care what kind they are, get all you can. It is very difficult to get them, Mr. Von Damme. Yeah. We'll try. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, Mr. Frapp, can I talk to you? Something's happened, hasn't it, Mr. Crowler? What's happened? If it is something that concerns us here, we better all hear it. The children... What they'd imagine would be worse than any reality. It is a man in the storeroom. His name is Carl. You knew him. One day he came to the office. He closed the door and asked me, what do you hear from your friend, Mr. Frank? I told him there was a rumor that you were in Switzerland. He said he had heard that rumor too, but he thought I might know something more. I did not pay much attention. I had tried to forget it. And then, yesterday, we were combing out of the storeroom out there. I had started down to the office. I looked back. He was standing, staring at the bookcase. He said, I thought I remembered a door up here. Was not there a door here leading to the loft? Then he asked me for more money. Twenty guilders more a week. Blackmail. Twenty guilders, very modest blackmail. That's just the beginning. You know what I think? He's the thief who was down there that night. That's how he knows we're here. How was it left? What did you tell him? I told him I had to think about it. What shall I do? Pay him the money? Take a chance on firing him or what? I do not know. For heaven's sakes, don't fire him. Pay him what he has. Keep him here where you can keep your eye on him. Is it so much that he's asking? I mean, what are they paying nowadays? He could get it in a war plant. Mm -hmm. But this is not a war plant. Mind you, I do not know if he knows or not. Offer him half, and we'll soon know if it is blackmail or not. And if it is, we, we've got to pay, haven't we? <laughs> Whatever he is, we've got to pay. Let us decide <laughs> that when the time comes. This may be all my imagination. You get to a point these days where you suspect everyone and everything. Happy New Year. 
Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Crowley. I will offer him help, then. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. You can thank your son for this. Him and his damn cat that night there. I tell you, it's just a question of time now. Sometimes I wish the end would come, whatever it is. Mark! Well, then at least we'd know where we were. You should be ashamed of yourself talking that way. Think how lucky we are. Think of the thousands dying in the war every day. Think of the people in concentration camps. What's the good of that? What's the good of thinking of misery when you're already miserable? That's stupid. We're young, Margaret and Pater and I. You grown-ups have had your chance. Look at us. If we begin thinking of all the horror in the world, we're lost. We're trying to hold on to some kind of ideals when everything, ideals, hope, everything's being destroyed. It isn't our fault the world is in such a mess. We weren't around when all this started. Now, you listen to me. So don't try to take it out on us. She talks as if we started the war. Did we start the war? I thought you were fine just now. You know just how to talk to him. I can never think when I'm mad. I say too much. I hurt people's feelings. I think you're just fine. So what he said about Mushi, about somebody eating him. All I could think is I wanted to hit him. So what I used to do in school, but here a fight starts, I just stuck in my room. You're lucky having a room to go to. His lordship is always in mine. When they started on me, I have to stand and take it. You gave somebody back to him just now. I get so mad. They formed their opinions about everything. But we're still trying to find out. We have problems here that no other people our age have ever had. And just as you think you solved them, something comes along and bang. You have to start all over again. I think your father's fine. Oh, he is, Peter. He is. He's the only one who's ever given me the feeling that I have any sense. Isn't it funny, you and I? Here we've been together all this time, and this is the first time we've ever really talked. It helps a lot to have someone to talk to, doesn't it? You let off steam. Any time that you want to let off steam, you can come to my room. I can get up an awful lot of steam. It's all right with me. Do you mean that? I said it, didn't I?
May I come in? No, Mr. Dussel. I'm not dressed yet. Oh. No, tell me. Of course you're not. You've got nice eyes. And a lot of animation and... Dursley's impatient to get in here. He takes the room for himself the entire day. You're not going in again tonight to see Peter, hmm? That is my intention. Aren't you afraid you're disturbing him? Mother, I have some intuition. Then may I ask you this much, Annie? Please don't shut the door when you go in. You sound like Mrs. Van Damme. Oh, no. I don't mean to suggest anything wrong. I only wish you wouldn't expose yourself to criticism. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm going to Peter's room. I'm not going to let Petronella Fondant spoil our friendship. Just a moment, Mr. Dussel. In my day, the boys called on the girls. You know how young people are. Peter's room is the only place where they can talk. Talk? That's not what they called it when I was a girl. I'm sorry, Margaret, that you have to be the one left out. I feel so guilty about you. Why? I mean, every time I go to Peter, into Peter's room, I have the feeling that I'm hurting you. I know if it were me, I'd be desperately jealous. I am jealous a little. Not of you and Peter. I'm, I'm only feeling sorry that I haven't anyone to whom to, to discuss my feelings. Margaret, I won't I, even. Listen, you found a companionship and I want you to enjoy it. In my heart, I feel that I've got a right to share feelings with someone, too. But I'm sure that Peter, that, that boy, he could just never be that person for me. Maybe there's nothing to be jealous about. Maybe I'm just taking the place of his cat. Will you please let me in my room? Just a minute, dear, dear Mr. Dussel. Here I go, to run the gauntlet. Thank you so much. Look at her. Not the good it did me to have a son. I never see him. Dear, I'd like to say a few words to my son. Do you mind? Peter, I do not want you staying up till all hours tonight. You need your sleep. You are a growing boy. Annie won't stay late. She's going to bed promptly at nine. Aren't you, Annie? Yes, Mother. May we go now? Listen for the chimes, dear.
the impossible. Treating us as if we're still in the nursery. Don't let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. I suppose you can't really blame them. They think back to what they were like at our age. They don't realize how much more advanced we are. Already I know what I want to do, don't you? I want to be a journalist or something. I love to write. What do you want to do? I know what I'd like right now. I'd like to make it to England, get with the Free Dutch forces over there. Peter, you wouldn't try a thing like that. You'd never make it. Well, I'd make it. Only a few of the hundreds that try do. I know, but I'd like to get in it and hit back. Just sit here. It's not for me. You like Margaret, don't you? Right from the start, you liked her. Liked her better than me. I don't know. It's all right. Everyone feels that way. Margaret's so good. She's sweet and bright and beautiful. And I'm not. I wouldn't say that. Oh, no, I'm not. I know that. I know quite well that I'm not a beauty. I never have been and never shall be. I don't agree at all. I think you're pretty. That's not true. And another thing, you've changed from the first, I mean. I have. I used to think that you were awful noisy. And what do you think now, Peter? How have I changed? Well, you... You're quieter. I'm glad you don't just hate me. I never said that. father's 
and kiss my hand. You wouldn't say those comment, would you? I wouldn't say so. for certain. Margaret would never kiss anyone unless she was engaged to them. And I'm sure too that mother never touched a man before father. But I don't know. Things are so different now. What do you think? Do you think a girl shouldn't Kiss anyone except if she's engaged or something? It's so hard to try to think what to do. And here we are, the whole world falling around our ears. And you think, well, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. What do you think? I suppose it, it depends on the girl. Who is son. No matter what they do, it's wrong. But others, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong with them. I always thought that even two people... I think I should go now. That's right. night. You won't let him stop you from coming? No. I might bring my diary. There's so many things in it I want to talk over with you. There's a lot about you. What kind of things? Well, I wouldn't want you to see some of it. I thought you were nothing. Just the way you thought about me. Did you change your mind? Did I change my mind about you? Well, you'll see. Outside, there is a quiet excitement. 
Invasion fever is mounting from day to day, and people talk of nothing else but the hope of liberation. It had best come soon. We here have had bad news. The people from whom we've got our ration cards have been arrested. Mr. Crawler is in the hospital. It seems he has ulcers. I'm afraid we are his ulcers. Meep has to run the business and us too. How very fortunate we are when you think of what is happening outside. confused. I am longing, so longing for everything. Let him go, Mr. Justin. Help me, Peter. Let him go. Peter, help me. 
Stealing the brand. It was you. And all the time we thought it was the rats. Mr. Pandal, how could you? I'm hungry. We're all of us hungry. I see the children getting thinner and thinner. Your own son, I've heard him moan in his sleep, he's so hungry. And you come down in the night and steal food that should go to them, the children. He needs more food than the rest of us. He's used to more. He's a big man. You're worse than he is. You're a mother. And yet you sacrifice your son to this man, this deceit. Don't think I haven't seen you. Always saving the choices bits for him. I've watched you. Day after day, and I've held my tongue, but not any longer. Not after this. Now I want him to go. I want him to get out of here. Edith. Get out of here. What do you mean? Just that. Take your things and get out. You're speaking in anger. You cannot mean what you're saying. I mean exactly that. For two long years we have lived here side by side. We have respected each other's rights. We have managed to live in peace. Are we now going to throw it all away? Mr. Van Dahl, I know this is never going to happen again, is it? No, no, no. He steals once, he'll steal again. I want him to leave. You go now! Mother, you're not putting Peter out. Peter hasn't done anything. I don't mean Peter. Peter can stay. I have to go with Diego, my father. He's no father to you, that man. He doesn't know what it means to be a father. I wouldn't feel right. I couldn't stay. Very well, then. Peter. No. Mrs. Frank, you would put us out in the street. You can find another hiding place. Where would we even find a cellar, a, a closet? Mr. Frank, you told Putty you would never forget what he did for you when you first came to Holland. You said you never would be able to repay him. If my him. husband had any obligations to you, he has paid it over and over. He did. I don't know you. I've never seen you like this. I should have spoken out long ago. You can't be nice to some people. There would have been plenty for all of us no, if you hadn't no, come in here. No, Mrs. Van Dyke, please. <sighs> we don't need the Nazis to destroy us. They're destroying ourselves. Mother, please don't send them away. It's daylight. And they'll be caught. I'm not going now. They'll stay until Meep finds them a place to Mrs. hide. Frank, Mr. Frank, Margot. Oh, no, no. We haven't sunk so low that we're going to fight amongst ourselves food. It's Lana, it's Mrs. Van Damme, Mr. Van Damme. You see what he's doing? I'm still standing by to bring you further news of the invasion. Did you hear that? For those of you who may not have heard, let me repeat. The landings began this morning on the coast of Normandy. It started, listen. D-Day has come. During the night and in the early hours of this morning, an immense armada of 4,000 ships and thousands Peter, of smaller craft... Myself. You're keeping all the big ones for yourself. No. Yes, you are. All the big ones. Look at the size of that one. Well, that's mine. And look at that one. That's Mr. Van Damme. Well, look what you're doing. Stop it! No. Stop it! Stop yelling for data! No, let's do it. It's me. It's Mr. Frank. Mr. Russell, I think of you. Don't let her see a thing like this. Well, this is Mrs. Frank. The invasion has begun. They've been on a scale. The most wonderful news. The invasion has begun. Only preliminary reports have come in. Did you hear? 
They have landed on the coast of France in Normandy. The British, the Americans? They are all in it. Dutch, French, Poles, Norwegians, everyone. Did they they come? Did they? It cannot be Mr. Crowler. It is Mr. Crowler. They speak also of landings by Catholics. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> when the nurse told me the news, I said to myself, there's only one place for me to be, and that is with my friends. Treated mother so mean and hard to her. No, I never know. Oh, I was mother. I was awful. Not like me. No one is as bad as me. Stop it! Let's be happy. <laughs> spirits these days, there is still excellent news of the invasion. And the best part about it is that I have a feeling that friends are coming. Our beloved queen spoke. She used words like soon, when I am back, speedy liberation, who knows? I may be back in school by fall. Wednesday, the 2nd of July, 1944. The invasion seems temporarily bogged down.
Mr. Crawler is back in the hospital. He has to have an operation. It seems D-Day was too much for him. Thank you. Ha ha, the joke is on us. Meep tells us the warehouseman doesn't know a thing, and we're paying him all that money. Our dear vegetable man is on his way to a concentration camp. He was picked up today for hiding two Jews in his house. There's not much. It was Mr. Hauk, our greengrocer, they arrested. And the other news is, the Gestapo have found our typewriter that was stolen. No. Uh-huh. They'll trace it back and back till it gets to us. You watch, you. Everyone is low. Even father can't raise their spirits. I have often been downcast myself but never in despair. I can shake off everything if I write, but, and that is the great question, will I ever be able to write well? I want to so much. I want to go on living even after my death. Goes again. Mr. Frank, do you hear? Yes, I hear. This is the third time. This is the third time in quick succession. It's a signal. I tell you, it's me trying to get us. For some reason, she, she can't come to us and she's trying to warn us of something. Please, Mr. Dussel, please. You're wasting your breath. Something has happened, Mr. Frank. It's been three days now that Meep hasn't been to see us. And today not a man has come to work. There hasn't been a sound in the building. Perhaps it's Sunday. We may have lost track of the days. You with the diary there, what day is it? I don't lose track of the days. I know exactly what day it is. It's Friday, the 4th of August. It's Friday and, and not a man at work. I tell you, Mr. Crowler is dead. That's the only explanation. He's dead, and, and they've closed down the building, and that's what Meep's trying to tell She would never telephone us, Mr. Bussell. Please, I beg of you, Mr. Frank, answer the phone. No, just pick it up and listen. You don't have to speak, just listen and see if it's me. For God's sake, answer the telephone! I've told you no. I do nothing that might let anyone know that we are in this building. Mr. Frank's right. There's no need to tell us what side you're on. If we wait here quietly and... Patiently, I believe that help will come.
too late. So we just wait here until we die. I can't stand it. I'll kill myself. For heaven's sake, stop it. I think you would be glad if I did. You want me to die. Whose fault is it we're here? We could have been safe in America, Switzerland. But no, no. You wouldn't leave when I wanted to. You couldn't leave your precious things. Your furniture. That's right. Blame it all on me. It's all my fault. Your hats, your shoes, your dishes. Your comfort, we had anything. My comfort. I never had anything I really wanted. Everything was for your pleasure. Look, Peter. Look at the sky. Aren't the clouds beautiful? Lovely, lovely day. I do, but I think I can't stand another minute of being cooped up. I think myself outside. I think I'm on a walk in the park where I used to go with Father. Where the crocus and the jonquils and the violets grow along the slopes. You know, the most wonderful part Thinking yourself outside? You can have it any way you like. You can have roses and violets and tulips all blooming in the same season. Isn't that wonderful? When I was outside, I used to take it all for granted. And now in here, I've just gone crazy about nature. I've just gone crazy. I think if something doesn't happen soon, if we don't get out of here, I can't stand much more of this. I wish you had a religion, Pater. I don't mean you have to be orthodox or believe in heaven and hell and purgatory and things. I just mean some religion. Doesn't matter what. Just to believe in something. When I think of all that's out there, the trees and flowers and those seagulls, When I think of the dearness of you, Peter. And the goodness of the people we know. Mr. Crawler and me. The vegetable man. All of them risking their lives for us every day. When I think of these good things, I'm not afraid anymore. I find myself God, and I think... That's... that's fine, but... When I begin to think, well, I get mad. Look at us. Hiding out of here for two years. Not able to move, caught like... Waiting for them to come and get us. not the only people that have had to suffer. There have always been people that have had to. Sometimes one race, sometimes another. And yet... That doesn't make me feel any better. I know it's terrible trying to have any faith when people are doing such horrible... But you know what I sometimes think? 
think the world may be going through a phase the way I was with mother. It'll pass. Maybe not for hundreds of years, but someday. I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are really good at heart. I want to see something now, not a thousand years from now. But, Pater, if you'd only look at it as part of the great pattern, that we're just a little minute in life. Listen to us, going at each other like a couple of stupid grown-ups. <laughs> Look at the sky. Isn't it lovely? Someday, when we get outside again, I'm going to... Take a bag and whatever hold of clothing. 
nothing else. So, dear diary, that means I must leave you behind. Goodbye for a while. P.S. Please, please, anyone, if you should find this diary, will you please keep it safe for me? Because someday I hope that No more. I had gone to the country to try to find food. When I got back, the police were in the building. We made it our business to learn how they knew. It was the thief who told them. We knew the thief. He it was... seems strange to me now. But we were also full of hope in the camp here in Holland where they first took us. The news of the war was good. The British and Americans were sweeping through France. We felt sure they would get to us in time to... But... In September, we were shipped to Poland. Men to one camp, women to another. From there, they were sent to Belsen. I stayed in Auschwitz. In January, we were freed. The few of us were left. The war was not yet over, no. It took us a long time to get home. Each time the train would stop it, or get out, you know, at a siding or a crossing and walk from group to group. Where were you? Were you at Belsen? At Buchenwald? At Mauthausen? Where? Is it possible that you ever knew my wife? Did you ever see my husband, my son, my daughter? That's how I found out about my wife's death. Margots, Van Dans, Peter, Dussel. But Anna. I still hoped. Yesterday I was in Rotterdam. I met a woman there. She'd been in Belsen with Anna. I know now. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. She puts me to shame.